Hey everyone, Nick Armenis here. Welcome to my video on Google Ads product research for 2019. I'm getting this question a lot. What's the criteria? What should I look for? Where do I find products? Guys, I'm going to cover everything off here. I do have another video on uh, Google product research, but this is just building on that. It's going to give you a strict criteria on what to look for. And I think it's going to help a lot of people that are currently struggling to find products. So let's get right on into it. So the basic criteria. So this is the bare minimum that you need to look for. Anything on top of this that you want to add down the track. And I do have certain things I build on, but this is the bare minimum. This is what you need. And this is what's going to get you started. So you need keyword search volume. Uh, how Google decides how to show your listing is based on the keywords in your title, your description, and things like that. So you need to make sure that the keywords that are in your description have some kind of volume within Google. So if they're not getting any monthly searches, then your product's never going to be shown. And if you don't include those products uh, in those words um, within your title and your description that are needed to trigger those searches, then your product's never going to be shown. So I'm getting some people's going in my group. Oh, hey, why is my product being shown? Potentially, one of the reasons is you're not using the right keywords or the keywords for the products you've selected just don't get enough volume. So I say a minimum of 500 for beginners, but to be honest, the higher the better. So you want something with kind of 2000 plus or you're never going to be able to scale it. So obviously you're limited on Google by the number of searches. So you can down the track obviously scale within Facebook, but Google is limited by those keywords and the number. So how are you going to check that? You're going to either use the keyword planner, which I'm sure pretty much all of you are aware. I will do a guide on the keyword planner in depth or another little thing that I like to use is the KW Finder. Dot com. So I'll get into KW Finder down the track once I actually do. I'll show you some examples through this. So the next step after you know you've got keyword search volume is you need to be able to price the product competitively against other people on Google Shopping or in the marketplace there. So people obviously on Shopping do do they're searching for something. So they're going to do their research. So a lot of people do say that you know Google ads have a much higher chance to convert because people are further down the funnel. Yes, they're a bit further down the funnel than people on Facebook, but no, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to do their research or have a look around. You've got to remember people are searching for this. So they're going to do their research. They're going to have a look through shopping. And if you're priced way out, then you're going to have a really hard time to sell it. Now, that's not to say you can't. What I would do then is, is if you find something, find something you want to sell that has the keyword search volume, what I would do is, is go and find similar products. It might be a different color, a different size, uh, things like that. And then what I'd do is I'd mix it up and I'd switch around some things. So I'd change the images, obviously. Um, I'd change the titles, the descriptions. And then what I could also do is I could make bundles uh, with multiples of the product or I could add other products to that bundle. So something that another person might see. So something that a person might see that has extra value or adds value to that initial purchase or something that has a very high perceived value. So it might be something really, really small that the person might want, but they might see it as this really cool big add-on. So obviously with that sort of a strategy, you still want to be within kind of 10 or 20% of the price because if you're way out, unless the perceived value is amazing, unless it's like something like, oh, this thing's stainless steel and it's gold, then how are you going to price it that much, uh, that big of a price difference? You need to be similar. It's super important, way more than Facebook. So the next step is you also need to be able to be profitable within this. So I like to say $15 uh, at a minimum, some people can get away with having less, but I think this day and age, you need to be selling stuff with $15 profit or you are going to really, really, really struggle to be profitable. Now, even if you've got a great back end, $10 uh, might, you might be able to get away with, but personally, stick to $15, you're going to have a much better chance of being profitable. And on top of that, I would actually stick to higher price. So I'd go minimum of $39.99 and have that as a filter within when you're searching for things. On top of that, I actually tend to stick to products $60 plus because I find it's much, much easier. You might have a bit of an issue, not an issue, but you have slightly less keyword search volume. So it may not be as scalable, but it's much, much easier. I don't know if you've seen, my average order value is much, much higher. So I'm able to spend more on advertising to obtain a customer, which if you're selling lower price items, you're just not going to be able to do it. So the next step is, and this isn't mandatory, but I like to have it is, so the product is trending upwards or at the very least isn't in a downtrend. 
So it's not something, you're not selling something in a summer product in winter in that country, which in that case, you'd then switch it to a different continent. So make sure that the product hasn't completely died off. It's at least either in an uptrend or it's not at the bottom of the, the trend and you're gonna have a much, much better time of picking profitable products. So that's the basic criteria. I think if you stick to that, you're gonna have a much better chance of finding good products to test and the aim of the game here is actually speed. So it's testing lots and lots and lots of these products. So not all of them are gonna be guaranteed, but this is what I think you need to have the best possible shot at making it succeed. So where to find them? So where do I find them? I scroll through my news newsfeed quite regularly. I do it for my agency, for myself, for my store, and I use tools uh, like ad swiping tools like this one right here, which is called Ad Swiper. So what AdSwiper does is as I'm scrolling through my news feed, because I go into a lot of stores and click uh, add to cart, fire the purchase pixel using a little bit of code in the JavaScript, uh, and just in general interact with a lot of drop shipping stuff. As you can see, a lot of the products, um, a lot of the products and ads and stuff in my news feed are drop shipping ones or marketing and things like that. So I scroll through here and I'd use and I'd grab some of these are yes, are quite saturated products. But what you can do is, is you can filter down to your country, filter by the most recent or by shares, comments, likes, and these are the ones that you just come across. Now, what you can also do is you can go over to here, search all ads. Now, guys, this is a free plugin also. It's a free Chrome plugin. And what you can do is, is have a look through here and go, okay, I'm just gonna go United States. I'm gonna go most shares because that's something obviously that has gone viral and I'm gonna go the shop now button. Now this is gonna give me ads where people are obviously probably more likely to be e-commerce stores. Now what I do is I look through here. So okay, this is actually a really cool ad because it's taking up such a big part of the newsfeed. So all of you would have seen this. What you can do is, is you can grab something like this product and you can go into AliExpress and you can go, okay, can I find something that's slightly different? So indestructible shoes. Now, obviously, those ones are camo, khaki, whatever you want to call them. Now, you might be able to go into, and you can filter by orders, newest, whatever. So, I filter by orders and by newest. So, orders is going to give me, obviously, the one with the most orders. Newest is going to give me the newest products. So, you might want to try this style here, which is slightly different, or this style. Obviously, you want something with orders and reviews, but this is just an idea, guys. So... These are the type of things you need to be looking at. That's one really good method. Just keep scrolling through, have a play around, have a look through here, even test different countries. Don't get lazy with this stuff. Just be creative, be different, and then try and look through all these different things and then go, if this product, if you believe it's saturated and it's got so much, sorry, it's had so many, so many views and you you feel like it's saturated, potentially don't use it. Um, or find something similar, find something like it that people might be searching for. So what a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of other people have told you is, once products tend to go viral on Facebook, people start to search for them on Google. So what you can do is you can also go through to the product, to the Facebook page, look at the store, go into info and ads. So this is a really big drop shipping store, obviously. And have a look at, are they selling anything else? Now, obviously, they're doing a shit ton of advertising on this one product because they've hit, they've made a killing off this thing. But that's the kind of stuff you can go into. Look into that, and that's a really good way to get your product research started. So, they're building on that is other dropshipping stores selling on Google Shopping or getting traffic uh, from paid search. So, as an example, if you went into this store here, and either use the similar web plugin or just use this plugin here to take you over there. Obviously, this store is getting a lot of traffic. It's ranked quite highly up. 140,000 is actually pretty good in terms of country ranks, getting a lot of visits, quite a decent bounce rate, lots of page visits. What's it doing here? So only 4.34% of its traffic is coming from here. So it's only 4.34% is coming from search. Now, what you'd want is you'd want to see something with 10%, 20% plus coming from there because then you'd know, okay, these guys are actually paying for traffic. They also do have a little bit of paid search. So they are getting a little bit here, 6.81% of their traffic is gonna be coming from that of the paid. So they're even getting a little bit of traffic from the display network and whatnot. So you can have a play around with this. Obviously it's quite limited because it's the free version, but if you do pay for the paid version, you can actually have a look within search ads to see, okay, 
what is the actual ad copy of their search ad. So stay tuned for that, guys. I'll cover that off in another video. But again, Amazon, I cover this strategy off with Amazon using Unicorn Smasher or Jungle Scout and have a look through different categories and go, okay, which ones are getting the most sales? Now, if you want more info on that one, go and watch my other video. I'll leave the link in, in the description below. But what I would do is, is focus on movers and shakers as seen on TV, home and kitchen, outdoor, jewelry, baby, home and garden. They're normally the kind of categories within drop shipping that tend to do quite well. Beauty is a bit of a tough one just because Google can be quite strict on things like any kind of uh, health products. So I would caution about those um, just in case you don't want to get your ad account banned because of it. But here's an example. So jump on into a certain category. So let's go to, let's go to home and kitchen. So let's go to home decor. Open the plugin, the Unicorn Smasher. Give it a bit of time. Sometimes it can lag a little bit. Estimated revenue or estimated sales. Click that. And have a look at this. So obviously, basic pillow. Have a look up here in the best sellers and stuff as well. Would avoid that. So from here, maybe you can find this not a similar nightlight or slightly different within um, AliExpress. Grab the nightlight. So what can we do? We could go over here, go night light. Okay, this night light has heat. So it's, this one's probably gonna be saturated, but potentially the star night light might be something that we could do. Now, what could we do then? So chuck in star night light, go United States. Okay, star night light only has 90 searches. So not great guys. But here you can also get the average cost per click, um, the competition, which is quite high. And then this here is also another metric of competitiveness. But what you could do is, is Star Night Light, add that in. It would come in with all these as well. So it's probably, look, this isn't going to be a great candidate unless you do something like Star Night Light for toddlers or Toddler Star Night Light, something like that, and come within that. All of this stuff is worth trying. There's no wrong or right way. No one's going to know if this is going to work or not. So that's the sort of stuff you need to do. Play around with. The longer the keyword, the, the probably easier it's going to be for you. So even if you did children's um, nightlight, projector, nursery, add, just add words to it. And then once you get into this habit of, okay, you've got this broad keyword, so it might be nightlight, then you branch off and do more and more research into further and further longer keywords. So the turtle LED nightlight, cool turtle LED nightlight. Start thinking and trying about doing things like that. There's, As I said, there's no wrong or right way. Just give it a crack, guys. So again, the other thing is you can do is you can jump into movers and shakers. So if you just Google Amazon movers and shakers, it's gonna take you to this section of Amazon. You can also get there a different way and you can look at best sellers, new releases, all that sort of stuff, most wish for gift ideas, just as a starting point. Now you can have a look camera and photo, electronics, stuff like that. But as I said, stick to the categories I mentioned just to begin with. If you are selling stuff successfully in something else, go for gold, guys. There's obviously no limit. Um, stay away from the branded stuff, obviously. But here's something, you might be able to go into this bento style lunchbox. Do the same process I just did, check the keywords, um, go in and check Google Trends as well, and go from there. Expandable water hose, as that comes into summer, this bad boy seems to sell all the time. So the other one you can kind of do is as seen on TV, as seen on TV products, which comes up within Amazon, and it tends to be home and kitchen stuff. Now, this sort of stuff, yep, oversaturated, but if you can find something similar in a different pack size, potentially, you could give it a crack. But again, it would fail the test due to the price point. There's just enough margin in there. So you will have seen, obviously, a lot of the winning products end up in Amazon Movers and Shakers. That's the sort of stuff that sells well on Facebook. And it's the sort of stuff you can give a try with on Google Shopping as long as the keyword search volume is there and you can make money. So eBay Watch Count is another one. What you can do is, is chuck in a category here or words or whatever and go through. on. And I check all the different ones to see if there's different um, needs or wants in different countries. And potentially the one that's working well in Australia, for example, I might be able to sell it to the US and it might do well there. It's 
So lastly, I will say, use a bit of imagination and try and be different. These, This is just the starting point to get you started, but I look at a million different websites. I even go out to physical stores and have a look. My job used to be to go out and check competition, check different factories in different countries, go to different retailers in different countries and see what products they were selling and what would do well in our stores. I do the same thing with my online store and that's what you need to be doing. You need to be treating this like a business. That's what the big businesses do. And you're lucky that I'm able to share this knowledge with you because it's actually quite rare for YouTubers and things like that to be passing this on because a lot of them haven't had this experience. They haven't worked in big retailers or big e-commerce stores. And yeah, you don't have to, obviously. There's no one saying you do, but I've got the experience and I'd love to share it with you. So jump on in my Facebook group. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be giving out a nice little checklist guide for this. So it's going to be coming out soon. It's going to have way more detail and I will do some case studies, but this is just to get you up and running. So please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much, guys.